So we can have a chemical reaction where this acetic acid protonates this bromide, forming these products. Then once we form these products, this hydrogen bromic acid can reprotonate the acetate, reforming the reactants. Then we form the reactants, which can reprotonate, reforming the products, and etc. So eventually this reaction will reach equilibrium. So once this reaction has reached equilibrium, will the vast majority of the molecules be in the form of the reactants, or will the vast majority of the molecules be in the form of the products, or will we have 50-50? Well, to determine this, we need to analyze the stability of these conjugate bases. And I'll let you know right now that this bromide is much more stable than acetate. So, and in fact, this acetate is very unstable. So now that we know that this acetate is very unstable, we know these products must not be very stable. So we know that this, these reactants are much more stable. So we know that tells us that once this reaction reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules will be in the form of these reactants because these reactants are more stable. So now we know once this reaction reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules will be in the form of these reactants. But again, to know that we need to quantify the stability of these, these conjugate bases. So how exactly do we quantify? How do we prove that this bromide is much more stable than this acetate? And therefore quantify and determine that the vast majority of the molecules will be in the form of the reactants? Well, first, let's analyze this acetate. And let's try to ask ourselves, is this acetate stable? Well, to determine that, we need to look at the, the acetic acid. So we know what acetic acid does. If it's in an aqueous solution, it protonates water, forming this acetate and hydronium. Then once we form these products, the hydronium can reprotonate, reforming these reactants and etc. So eventually this reaction will reach equilibrium. And we know, so once this reaction reaches equilibrium, will the vast majority of the molecules be in the form of these products or will the vast majority of the molecules be in the form of the reactants? How can we determine once this reaction reaches equilibrium, whether the vast majority of the molecules will be in the form of the reactants or products? Well, to determine that, we can use the Ka of acetic acid. So we know we can look in any old chemistry textbook and determine what, and look up what the Ka is of acetic acid. And we know that Ka will equal this equation, and we know how we use this Ka equation. Essentially, we let this reaction react, we let it reach equilibrium, then we take those concentrations at equilibrium and plug them into this Ka equation. We, this, this should, you should already be familiar with this. And we know we essentially take the products and divide it by the reactants. And again, using Ka's, we, we don't worry about the water. So again, we let this reaction react. We let it reach equilibrium. We take those concentrations at equilibrium, plug them into this equation, and now tell us the Ka of this acid. And again, we can look in any text, textbook and find that the Ka of acetic acid happens to be around 1 times 10 to negative 5. So what does that tell us? What does it mean if the Ka of acetic acid is 1 times 10 to negative 5? Well, what that tells us is once this reaction reaches equilibrium, we take those concentrations at equilibrium, plug them into this equation, and they equal 1 times 10 to negative 5. They equal this ratio, which is again is 1 times 10 to negative 5. So that tells us once this reaction reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules are in the form of the reactants, and very little molecules are in the form of these products. We know we take those, we let this reaction react, reach equilibrium, we take those concentrations at equilibrium, and we essentially get this ratio where the vast majority of the molecules are in the form of the reactants. So we know when this reaction reaches equilibrium, virtually all of the molecules are in the form of these, these reactants and very little products are made. Why are such little products made relative to the reactants? Because this acetate is very unstable. So now we know using the K of this acetic acid, we were able to infer that this acetate is very unstable. And that explains why at equilibrium, very little products are made. So now we know, using the Ka of acetic acid, we were able to determine that this acetate is very unstable. At equilibrium, very little acetate is made because it's very unstable. So that's that. this is the Ka of acetic acid, but we know sometimes instead of dealing with Ka's, we like to deal with PKA's. And Ka's and PKA's, they tell us the exact same information. But when we have the Ka, we can simply plug it into this equation and determine the PKA. So now we can find that the PKA of acetic acid is 5. So now we know acetic acid has a pKa of 5. And the only reason why we care about this pKa, because again, if we know acetic acid has a pKa of 5, that essentially tells us that acetate is very unstable. We know the higher the pKa, the more unstable the conjugate base. So we know a pKa of 5, that tells us, essentially what that tells us is that this, this, this conjugate base, this acetate is very unstable.
So now we know, now we know this acetate is very unstable. But what about this bromide? Is this bromide stable? Well, to determine that, we need to look at this hydrobromic acid. So we know this hydrobromic acid will protonate water, forming this bromide in hydronium. Then the hydronium will reprotonate this bromide, reforming these reactants, and eventually this reaction will reach equilibrium. So once this reaction reaches equilibrium, will the vast majority of the molecules be in the form of these products, or will the vast majority of the molecules be in the form of these reactants? Well, we can determine that using the Ka of hydrobromic acid. So we can look in any chemistry textbook and look up the Ka, and we can find that the Ka of hydrobromic acid happens to be 10 to 9. So what does that mean? What does this tell us about hydrobromic acid? Well, that tells us that this reaction reacts, it reaches equilibrium, then we take those concentrations at equilibrium, once this reaction reaches equilibrium, we take those concentrations at equilibrium, plug them into this equation, and it equals 10 to the 9. So that means that once this reaction reaches equilibrium concentrations, we know the vast majority of the molecules are in the form of these products relative to reactants. We know at equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules are in the form of these products, and that's why we get this ratio. That's why we get this Ka. So therefore, we know once we reach equilibrium, essentially all the molecules will be in the form of these products, and very little reactants will be made at once we're at equilibrium concentrations. So that tells us that this bromide must be very stable, and that's why at equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules are in the form of these products, because this bromide is very stable. So now we know, based on the Ka of this hydrobromic acid, now we know that this bromide is very stable. And again, sometimes instead of dealing with Ka's, we like to deal with pKa's. And again, we know the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So we know hydrobromic acid has a pKa of negative 9. So therefore, we know it's a strong acid. And we know it's a strong acid because it creates a very stable conjugate base. So again, so we, sometimes people like to deal with these Ka's, but we know once we have Ka's, we, we explain the formula we can use to find the pKa. But now we know. So, so now we've determined, based on the pKa's of these acids, we were able to determine that based on this pKa of having a low pKa, we know this bromide is very stable. And based on this pKa, we were able to determine that this acetate is very unstable. So now we know this bromide is much more stable. So now we know at equilibrium, once this reaction reacts and reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules should be in the form of these reactants because this guy's much more stable. But how exactly do we quantify numerically how many more reactants we'll have relative to products? Well, to do that is actually very straightforward. What we need to do is find the pKa of this reaction. So we know an acid can have a pKa. We know these acids can have pKa's. But this reaction can also have a pKa. So how do we find the pKa of this reaction? Well, it's actually really straightforward. It's, it's actually super easy. What you do is you take the pKa. You, what you do is you take the pKa of the acid on the right and subtract it by the pKa of the acid on the left. It's literally just that easy. The way it's already formed it almost does it for you. You literally just find the pKa on the left, and then you find the, the acid and the pKa of the acid on the right, and you literally just subtract them. So 5 minus negative 9 is, is just 14. So now we know this reaction has a pKa of 14, which is, again, you just you find the acid on the left and find its pKa. Then you find the acid on the right and find its pKa, and you just subtract them. 5 minus negative 9 gives you 14. So now we know this reaction has a pKa of 14. And we know once we have pKa's, we can simply use this equation to find the Ka. So based on the pKa of this reaction, we can determine what the Ka of this reaction is. So we know this reaction has a Ka of 10 to negative 14. And really, in this context, really, you can also, it's essentially the same thing as the Kq. So now we know this reaction has an equilibrium constant of 10 to negative 14. So what does that tell us? Well, we know how we use this equilibrium constant reaction. Essentially, this, we let this reaction react. We let it reach equilibrium. Then we take those concentrations at equilibrium and plug them into this equation, where we take the products. We take the products over the reactants. So we take those concentrations at equilibrium, plug them in, and we know they'll equal the Kq, which we know we already determined the Kq is 10 to negative 14. So what does that tell us? That tells us once this reaction reaches equilibrium. Essentially, the vast majority of the molecules are in the form of the reactants, and very little of the molecules are in the form of the products. When we take those, once this reaction reaches equilibrium, and we take those concentrations at equilibrium, we get this, we get this ratio. We get this, this ratio, which is the Kq. So the, we can see virtually all of the molecules will be in the form of these reactants. So once we reach equilibrium, 
virtually all the molecules are in the form of these reactants and very little products are made. We can see this ratio. So again, this, this KQ tells us the ratio of reactants relative to products. So now we know, now we've quantified exactly how many reactants we'll have relative to products. And now we've proved that once this reaction reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules will be in the form of these reactants. But that's actually the easy way. That's the easy way of quantifying how many reactants we'll have relative to products. So there's actually a harder way. So the harder way we do this is first let's focus on this, this acetic acid. We know this acetic acid is going to protonate something turning into acetate. So that's what's going on with the acetic acid. And then we know this hydrobromic acid, it's also this hydrobromic acid is going to protonate something forming this bromide. So we have these two reactions going on at the same time. And the way I drew this reaction, it kind of looks like that this acetic acid protonates the bromide forming this hydrobromic acid, then it protonates the acetate forming the acetic acid. But in fact, that's actually not what's going on. In reality, what's going on is this acetic acid is protonating water forming hydronium. And then that hydronium protonates this bromide forming hydrobromic acid. So again, we know this, this reaction is occurring in an aqueous solution. So rather than reacting with each other, they're reacting with water, with, which then reacts with, the, with the, this bromide and et cetera. Then when, when we form this hydrobromic acid, then protonates water forming hydronium, which again protonates that acetate forming acetic acid. So in reality, we don't have this one reaction. In reality, we have two reactions. We have these two reactions which make up this reaction. And something else you should be familiar with is that whenever you have the Ka of two reactions, you can simply multiply them to find the Ka of the reaction that they make. So again, remember, it's these two reactions that make up this reaction. So essentially, if you have the Ka of this reaction and you have the Ka of this reaction, you can multiply them to find the Ka of this reaction. And that's just something you should be familiar with. So if we want to find the Ka of this reaction, we need to find the Ka of these two reactions. So first, let's find the Ka of this reaction. How do we determine that? Well, this is really straightforward. We know we let this reaction react. We let it reach equilibrium. We take those concentrations at equilibrium, plug them into this Ka equation, and that'll give us the Ka. And in fact, we can simply look up the Ka of acetic acid. And, and we can just look in a textbook and find what the Ka of acetic acid is, which again is represented by this. So now we know the Ka of acetic acid. We can literally just look it up. So what's going on with this reaction, with, with this hydrobromic acid? Well, again, we, we know we, we can take, we remember when finding the equilibrium constants, we take the products and divide it by the reactants. And again, we, we ignore the water because that's a solvent. So we take the products and divide it by the reactants. So what will that equal? Well, what, 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 what equilibrium constant will this reaction equal? So again, this is actually a little complex. So we know, we know when we have hydrobromic acid, protonating water, forming bromide and hydronium, we know it reaches equilibrium. We take those concentrations at equilibrium, and that gives us the Ka. So we know, and we can easily find the Ka of hydrobromic acid in any old textbook. So we know this equals the Ka. But notice the way we have our chemical reaction occurring, it's, it's a little different. Because uh, again, pro products over reactants gives us this. But, but again, but notice we essentially have the reciprocal of the normal Ka. Normally, when the Ka is, is, is like this, where again, we have these products over these reactants, that gives us the Ka. So this gives us the Ka. However, we have, based on our chemical reaction, we kind of have the reverse. We have the reciprocal. We can see we have the reciprocal. So therefore, what does this, what our chemical reaction that we're interested in, what does this equal? How, how can we determine the equilibrium constant of this reaction? Well, again, we, it will simply be the reciprocal. Because again, we know the Ka, normally with, when dealing with the Ka is where we have the conjugate base as the products over the, the reactants. Norm, normally, this is the Ka, which we can find in any old textbook. But we happen to have the reciprocal. Our reaction happens to be the reciprocal. So our reaction would be the reciprocal of this Ka. And numerically, we know this makes sense because we know what's going on. So we know this reaction has a K of 10 to the 9. So, so that's what this reaction will equal. And we know what that means. That means when this reaction reacts, it reaches equilibrium. We take those concentrations at equilibrium. And we have a lot more of these products relative to reactants. We know when this reaction reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules are in the form of this bromide and hydronium. So therefore, we know when this reaction reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules will be in the form of this bromide and, and hydronium. So we know the vast majority of the molecules will be in this hydronium and bromide. Again, we already determined that using this Ka.
So again, and we know, and we already know what the ratio is, but again, just the way we happen to have in an alchemical reaction, we see it would be the reciprocal. So that's why instead of using the, the Ka and, and this numerical value, we use one over the K. We use the reciprocal of the K just based on the way this equation works. And we know when this reaction reaches equilibrium, the vast majority of the molecules would be in the form of these, these reactants, and that's why we get this ratio, so that's why we use one over the Ka. So again, I know that's a little complex, but, but really the point is you take this reaction, which is in the normal form where we get the conjugate base on the products and, and the normal undissociated acid on the reactants. So with this one that's normal, we can simply use the Ka. But because this one is reversed, because we have the, the conjugate base as the reactants and because it's reversed, just the way we, we drew the reaction, instead of using the Ka, we use one over the Ka. So that's just something you should get familiar with. But again, now we know these, the, these two reactions constants, uh, equilibrium constants, so we can multiply them to find the Ka of this reaction. So now we would simply multiply them to find the Ka of this reaction. And we know this is represented by this, and this is represented by this. So if we're multiplying them, we would simply multiply them where these hydroniums would cancel. So if we cancel those out, we would essentially get this, which we know equals the Ka of this reaction. Which again, we already know. We already know how to find the Ka or equilibrium constant of this reaction where we take the products over the, the reactants. But the point is, we find the Ka of this reaction, then we find the equilibrium constant of this reaction, which we know is 1 over the Ka, and we can multiply them to find out the Ka of this reaction. Because again, we know these two reactions make up this reaction. So again, we, we just multiply these to find the Ka of this reaction. And again, we know we can look in any textbook to find the Ka of acetic acid and plug that in. And we can look in any textbook to find the Ka of hydrobromic acid and plug it in and do the reciprocal of that. So if we plugged in those values, we would essentially get this and we would multiply them because again, we would multiply these to find the Ka. So we would multiply them and we would get a Ka of 10 to negative 14. So now we know. Now we know this reaction has an equilibrium constant of 1 times 10 to negative 14. But why do we care? Why do, why do we care? Why do we go through all that work to find the equilibrium constant of this reaction? Well, we know what that tells us. We know this reaction reacts, reaches equilibrium. We take those concentrations at equilibrium, plug them into this equation, and they equal this, this value, this, this equilibrium constant. So that means when this reaction reaches equilibrium, we take those concentrations at equilibrium, plug them in, and we get this ratio. We get this ratio which essentially tells us that at equilibrium, virtually all the molecules are in the form of the reactants. And at equilibrium, we have very little products, at least relative to the reactants, because we have this ratio. So that's the hard way of quantifying how many reactants we'll have relative to products. But the point is, if, if you can find the pKa's of these acids, you can essentially quantify, once this reaction reaches equilibrium, you can quantify how many reactants you'll have relative to products. 